Before I jump into my first solstice book of the year, I want to remind you that sometimes the most meaningful gift is to someone you don't even know. I'm partnering with an outdoor store in my hometown of Portland, Oregon, on a fundraiser to buy warm clothes and camping gear for people who don't have stable housing to help make their winter a little easier. There will be a link to donate in the description if you have a bit of extra cash. And if you've got any old clothes or blankets or camping gear that you aren't using in your own house, you could donate them to an organization in your own community and help someone in need. Anyway, this is The Shortest Day, Celebrating the Winter Solstice, by Wendy Pfeffer, illustrated by Jesse Reich. For Steve, Diane, Mark, Jennifer, Sharon, Johnny, Kirsten, Paul, Eric, and Jill, several of whom are fine writers. WP. To BSR with great love and gratitude, JR. In late autumn in the northern part of the world, squirrels hide nuts, foxes grow thick fur coats, and flocks of birds fly to warmer places. The sun rises later each morning and sets earlier each evening. Each day, it appears lower in the southern sky. As the sun gets lower and lower, the north gets less and less daylight. The air grows colder. Chickadees fluff their feathers to keep warm. Woodchucks hibernate in their burrows, and white-tailed deer nuzzle through the snow to find the last blades of grass. On short winter days, Children bundle in warm clothes and walk through a frosty white world, dragging long shadows behind them. On long winter nights, families eat dinner while it's dark outside. Children wonder when the days will get long again so they can play outside after dinner, like they did in summer. In the north, on or around December 21st, the sun reaches its lowest point on the horizon, making that day the shortest day of the year. Like all days, December 21st has 24 hours, but it's called the shortest day because it has the fewest hours of daylight. The shortest day, called the winter solstice, is the beginning of winter. And in some places, winter means cold, nose-nipping weather. The earth tilts as it moves around the sun. When the northern part of the earth tilts away from the sun, the north gets less heat and light than the southern part. Long ago, people didn't understand how the earth tilts and moves around the sun. They didn't understand why each day had less sunshine than the day before. Some believed that evil spirits made the sun go away. People feared that the sun wouldn't shine on them anymore, making their world cold and dreary and dark. They needed the sun's warmth and light. So did their plants, which they needed for food. They held ceremonies that lasted for weeks to persuade their gods to bring the sun back. Over the years, people noticed that after short days, the days gradually got longer. Joyous people bathed in the sun's warmth and light. They celebrated their harvests. About 5,000 years ago, people who studied the sky noticed that day after day, the sun set in different places on the western horizon. They discovered that when the sun set farthest south, that was the shortest day. These early astronomers planned to mark the shortest day. Then each year, people would know when the days would start getting longer again. On the day when the sun reached its southernmost point on the horizon, the astronomers carried out their plan. Workers stacked stones to frame the setting stun, sun. They made a special opening, like a keyhole or the eye of a needle. When the su setting sun's rays beamed through that opening, people knew the shortest day was over. 
days gradually got longer for the next six months. When the sun appeared farthest to the north, its rays shone through another keyhole. People knew it was the longest day of the year, the first day of summer. In China, over 3,000 years ago, astronomers measured shadows to determine the shortest day. The longest shadows appeared on the shortest day because the sun was at its lowest point in the sky. They knew that as the sun appeared higher in the sky, the shadows would get shorter and the days would get longer. Over 2,000 years ago, Romans celebrated the shortest day with festivals and merrymaking. They gave evergreen branches to friends as a sign of good luck. Evergreen wreaths decorated their doors. Since these plants stayed green when others turned brown, they reminded the Romans of the coming spring. Mistletoe and holly hung in their homes because plants that survived the harsh winter were symbols of life. Many people believed these plants would bring strength to their families. About 1,000 years ago, Europeans celebrated the winter solstice. Druid priests of England and Ireland decorated oak trees with golden apples and candles to represent harvest and light. In Sweden, a festival of light celebrated the return of longer days. On St. Lucia's Day, girls wore crowns of evergreens and candles to rekindle the sun's fire as they delivered warm buns to family and friends. Boys went from door to door, singing to the neighbors for a few coins. Around the same time in history, the Incas of Peru marked the shortest day with a festival in honor of the sun. At dawn, when the sun first appeared, shouts of happiness rang out. Then the Incas used a shiny surface to reflect the sun's rays onto fluffy, dry cotton. The sun heated the cotton and made it burst into flame. They carried the fire to their temples and kept it burning on the altars all year because it came from one of their gods, the sun. Today, people still celebrate at the beginning of winter by decorating their houses, lighting the darkness, gathering together, and exchanging gifts. They no longer worry that the sun will disappear forever. People know that days get colder when their part of the earth is tilts away from the sun. They know that days get shorter when the sun appears lower in the sky. People celebrate the shortest day because longer days follow. Flocks of birds will return, Seedling oak trees will sprout, and children can play outside after, win after dinner. For more than 5,000 years, people have welcomed the winter solstice because it's a new beginning. Now a little science. Solstice facts. The earth is always spinning, like a top. See? Here's the top. And here's the little point that it sits on and it spins around. It takes 24 hours for the Earth to turn one time. When the Earth turns towards the sun, it's day. When it turns away from the sun, it's night. It takes 12 months for the Earth to go around the sun. The tilt of the Earth on its axis as it rotates, determines how the sun's rays hit the earth and what season it is. Over 750 years ago, the word solstice was first used for the time when the sun seemed to stop moving as it rose and set along the horizon. Solstice comes from Latin, the language of the ancient Romans. In Latin, sol means sun, and sistere means to stop. Solstice, solstice, sun stops. In the northern part of the world, the winter solstice usually occurs on December 21st, but the Earth doesn't move at a steady speed around the sun, so sometimes the winter solstice occurs on December 20th, 22nd, or even 23rd. Equinox comes from two Latin words. Equi, equi means equal, and nox means night. On the spring equinox and autumn equinox, Day and night have equal hours. 
You can read more about the movement of the Earth. It's spinning and it's rotating around the sun, making our years and our seasons on its tilt on your own when you buy the book. It even has a place for you to, for you to draw in, uh, make a winter sunrise and sunset chart. So you can actually write in when the sun is setting at different times of year. Measure shadows on the shortest day, another cool activity you can do. It looks like, unfortunately, this library book, someone did not treat very well. I seem to have drawn, him, drawn on it. Find the sun's northernmost and southernmost points. More activities show how the tilt of the earth makes the seasons. This is something we do in Montessori school. You can use any kind of ball. Uh, I find a, bas a basketball works really well because you can tell where the top and bottom is and the uh, equinox, the basketballs have a natural kind of ring right there. Um, but don't poke a hole all the way through it or else your basketball will be flat. Have a winter solstice party. Have a winter solstice party for the birds. Further reading and some websites. That was The Shortest Day, Celebrating the Winter Solstice by Wendy Pfeffer and Jesse Reich. And this is EDU Kidspace. Subscribe for more stories, books, lesson, and lessons, uh, and hit the bell button so you're notified when I put out new books. If you wanna hear about something in particular, send me a message on the channel or uh, leave me a message in the comments here. And tell your parents if they have some extra money to help someone out this winter, to check out that link in the video description. Thank you.